Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the celebration of the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time. A special welcome to any visitors among us. The order of music and liturgy is found in the bulletin. Our presider is Father David Hashka. With respect for the celebration of the Mass, please silence all cell phones and electronic devices at this time. The text for our opening song is seen on the slides or found in the hymnal at number 533. Please stand as we begin our liturgy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Thank you. I wish to also acknowledge and offer a special welcome to those who will join our prayer through the medium of cable television and or internet. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, you came to gather people of every race and nation into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> Christ Jesus, you come to us now in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you will return in glory with salvation for your people. 
Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, so that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true joy is found. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And let us now attend to the living word of God. reading the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, I know their works and their thoughts, and I come to gather nations of every language. They shall come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them. From them I will send fugitives to the nations, to Tarshish, Put, and Lud, Mosach, Tubal and Javan, to the distant coastlands that have never heard of my fame or seen my glory, and they shall proclaim my glory among the nations. They shall bring all your brothers and sisters from all the nations as an offering to the Lord, on horses and in chariots, in carts, upon mules and dromedaries, to Jerusalem, my holy mountain, says the Lord, just as the Israelites bring their offering to the house of the Lord in clean vessels. Some of these I will take as priests and Levites, says the Lord. The word of the Lord.
reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have forgotten the exhortation addressed to you as children. My son, do not disdain the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when reproved by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. He scourges every son he acknowledges. Endure your trials as discipline. God treats you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? At the time, all discipline seems a cause not for joy, but for pain. Yet later it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. So strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet, that what is lame may not be disjointed, but healed. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with From the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. We just wound up on the wrong page here. <laughs> Sorry. Ah, found it. This is from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus passed through the towns and villages, teaching as he went and making his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few people be saved? He answered them, strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I tell you, will attempt to enter that will not be strong enough. After the master of the house has arisen and locked the door, then will you stand outside, knocking and saying, Lord, open the door for us. He will say to you in reply, I do not know where you are from. And you will say, 
We ate and drank in your company, and you taught in our streets. And again he will say to you, I do not know where you are from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. And there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves cast out. And people will come from the east and the west and from the north and the south, and they will recline at the table in the kingdom of God. For behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. The good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. These readings today put me in mind of an experience I had some years ago now. I was invited to supper with the family of a former student. As the evening wore on with a lot of after-dinner conversation, their two very bright children, a boy age six and a girl age eight, got to squabbling with each other. The boy used some terminology regarding his sister that his parents found, shall we say, distressing. When he was corrected, the boy objected, arguing, well, the other kids at school use those words all the time. Now, thus far, this sequence of events is probably quite familiar to any of you who have raised children. But what I found memorable about the evening was what happened next. The mother exclaimed to her young son, in our family, we never use such language, especially with another member. The six-year-old paused almost in mid-wail, and on his young face you could read the quandary he was facing. To which group did he belong? All the other kids at school, or to his immediate family? And what might be the consequences if he chose to identify more with the other kids? Now, were this lad a teenager, this might have gone a different way. But as a bright six-year-old, he pretty quickly determined that it was in his better interest to choose the family. He settled down and even, with a little prodding, apologized to his sister. In that moment, I remember reflecting, for us human beings, who we belong to or where we belong to is very important. We're made for belonging. We spend a great deal of time and energy determining and pursuing our belonging. Yes, to family, but also to age cohorts, to class, to nations, to races, to political parties and ideologies. We also spend a lot of time and attention trying to determine who doesn't belong. In our first reading today, the prophet Isaiah, speaking to the tribes of Israel, declared that the Lord would gather to himself nations of every language. And some of them, the Lord would even take as priests and Levites. 
and they realized their belonging as the chosen people was not as exclusive as they might have thought, and their own belonging not as guaranteed as they might have thought either. Who belongs and who doesn't? The question put to Jesus in the gospel has a similar tone. Lord, will only a few of us be saved? And he simply answers, strive to enter through the narrow gate, for many will attempt to enter, but will not be strong enough. And then he paints for them this picture of wailing and grinding of teeth as you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, all your ancestors and the prophets in the kingdom and you yourself on the outside. Just as it was for the six-year-old in my story, evidently there are some behavioral and attitudinal conditions for those who would belong to the people saved by Jesus. And Jesus goes on to say, people will come from the east and the west and the north and the south, and they will recline at table in the kingdom of God. The call of the gospel is universal, but it is not necessarily easy. It is intended for all, but it is offered through Christ alone. First of all, the Messianic banquet is only for those who are prepared to eat the flesh of the Messiah and to drink his blood. Those who have become outsiders do so through their failure to respond to the invitation. Exclusion does not come from a lack in the wideness of God's mercy because again, people are flocking in from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Those standing outside are simply those who by their behavior and attitudes chose to be excluded. Elsewhere in the gospel, Jesus says, Unless you become like a child, you cannot enter the kingdom. So let's follow the wisdom of that six-year-old. Let's choose behaviors and attitudes that are fitting to those saved by Christ's death and resurrection so that we too might belong. Amen. Let us profess together our faith. I believe.
gathered as Christians, let us intercede for the needs of our world. May the Church of Christ welcome all people into the family of Jesus' disciples. We pray to the Lord. Lord for nations of the world and their leaders, for commitment to caring for refugees and those most in need, we pray to the Lord. Lord for those who suffer discrimination, ridicule, or exclusion from society, for those who live with illness, poverty, or unemployment, we pray to the Lord. May we who have gathered here be strengthened in our Christian journey toward the joys of God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. For the special intentions of those whose grateful offerings support the liturgies and ministries of St. Olaf Parish in the heart of the city, we pray to the Lord. For those who have asked for our prayers, and for our loved ones who have died. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear and answer these prayers which we make in the name of Jesus, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption to the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. And now, as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. We remember that on the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that, by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, whose body and blood we have communion. And having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope, Bernard our Bishop, all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into our world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection, Give them the fullness of life. And grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with Saints Olaf of Norway and Bridget of Sweden, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. 
Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Because of the great generosity of our parishioners and friends from around the Twin Cities, our building's all torn up. <laughs> and the reconstruction has begun. So now we would simply ask for your patience as we deal with the dislocations that are involved. 
and look forward to the day when all this will be gone and we once again have a beautiful worship space. Let's stand and conclude our prayer. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us now go forth to live the gospel. <laughs>